and sing it one and all. G'day listeners, it's Peps and we have today the 2022 North Melbourne season preview. And from popular demand from last year, we had this guy on and the feedback that came, get him on for 2022. There's only one person that we could speak to and it's Ross Payne from the North Talk podcast. Ross Welcome to Lace Out, and one thing I have to ask, will the Kangaroos be bouncing up the ladder in 2022? Uh, Peps, it's going to be a very short bounce, if uh, you, if in that terminology. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I've got to take a deep breath, to, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit, look, 12 months ago, I think we saw it coming. I think I was on, on with you, and I was yeah. saying that um, we saw the writing on the wall a little bit that season and, and what had to happen. And look, uh, we're forever and a day north had finished mid-table or thereabouts, and we had to fall out or drop out um, and get that really high draft pick, which we got. And uh, Jason Horn francis which I am probably will talk, talk about uh, in a moment, um, is that man. And you know, thus far, it looks like he will be a super player for many years. Let's hope, let's hope he doesn't go home to South Australia. Um, but uh, th- that's what needed to happen. And 2021... Um, was what it was, um, and here we are. We're trying to trying to be optimistic. I think I'll be I'll re- be realistic for you and the listeners, to be honest. Um, and that's all I, all I can do. I'm not going to blow wind and don't sugarcoat it. Just just my opinion. I won't sugarcoat it at all. Ross, Ross, I think the AFL ladder is a little bit like sex. Just because you're on the bottom doesn't always mean that's a bad thing. You got Jason Horn Francis into the club. All right, you yeah. got a guy who's. Running the show, David Noble, who I just I just love the way he handles himself. You got a young crop of kids. Like you look at your age profile for your list, it's your seventeenth in terms of age. So your list yeah. is super young, and for games, it's sixteenth. I can look at my club. Everybody knows I barrack for the D's, and we were in this position a number of years ago. You gotta build the boys organically, and then when you're ready. Bring them in as well too. Well, a I lot of experience at the top end. You are, I reckon, you are in a, a lot better position than a couple of the other clubs that we're going to mention a little bit later on. Yeah, yeah. I like to think that North fans are pretty realistic and understand exactly where we're at and what the club's trying to achieve. In a way, I feel like we're copying Melbourne maybe from about seven to ten years ago. That uh, get our midfield sorted first and then work our way out. So I think that's what we've done. We we see the midfield as. Um, really promising where we're all extremely excited about a midfield we think it's going to go places um it's just i think defense and forward which i'll get to as well shortly that that's where we need to work on um the worry is that when once it gets down defense then it'll leak pretty quickly um and i think in in coming years and ho- hopefully in this i can't believe i'm already talking about next end of this season but yep. post season that we we address um, our key back issue, um, because that that will be an issue uh, when you've got Josh Walker and Zebel there. It's quite um, they're getting to the end. If one of them's already at the end, and they'll just probably talk into Josh Walker. I'm talking about playing yeah. playing on for a, an extra year because of Robbie Tarrant leaving to, uh, to Richmond. Um, that that's that's probably exactly um, our issues mostly this season. We've we, we are hoping that our midfield kicks on more, so we're able to win the centre clearances, get the ball out more. Get inside 50 more. We have to clean up our inside um, forward 50 entries because that that has been a real issue for us, certainly last year, and that's something we've noticed. So if you're going to win the ball out of the middle, you've got to do something with it. Um, and it all, it all, as you know, it all links together. Uh, the the mids need protection, yep. and 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 numbers, and I guess time to learn and and time to breathe. So. Yep. You know, we see the outs like you know Taron Thomas on the outside of the pack, and we you know Aaron Hall can chip in, and Jane Stevenson. We we see that's the, I think that's the right mix. That's a good mix. And then your inside, you you know your Powell's, your Phillips, your Elder Hughes, your Horn Francis types, Simkin. Um, they're, they're 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 the inside. So we've got a good mix there. It's, we've got I, a core. I, I, that's You've a really got good something core. to look so, at, and I think. What you said was perfect. There's too many clubs that are delusional. There's one club that I don't know if you know, but they've been saying, "Can you smell what we're what we're cooking?" for many many years, and then is they had the Barassi st- rivalry. You're a D. Is this the Barassi rivalry no, We're still there? Is it lingering? No, it, there's no Barassi rivalry. We do mention <laughs> Barass quite heavily on our sh- on, on the podcast on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. We broadcast live for everybody listening, but we. 
there's, there's clubs that have just sort of teased and teased and teased. You've never teased. You've either been top or gone, you know what? It's we have to we have to strip it out. And if you go back a number of years ago when you cut all those players out, people thinking, what the hell were you doing? Because you kept finishing mid table. And yeah. that doesn't achieve anything. So it was the right decision. Yes, you're going to take a step backwards, but in the you're going to be having those two steps forward. And even like when you mentioned your age, your average, average age is 23 and a half. Average. Yep. They're babies in, in the list. Yep. And even from a games perspective, the average number of games is 55. Looking at your mob. But the thing is, when you have a look at some of those numbers, Todd Goldstein's got 273. So he's almost making up five people from that perspective. Zeebel's got close to 230 or 250. So there's another five. So the numbers are really skew if. You, are, you look at your list and at least half have played under 50 games. More than half have played under 50 games. There's so much growth. You've just got to keep them together and keep those old boys just to buffer them around because once they grow, and we've seen it through a number of clubs where they've come, Hawthorne did it, Dees have done it, Doggies have done it as well over the last number of years, even Richmond to a degree. If you can keep that core and they come through together, my God, when it, when it comes, it comes in a hurry. Yeah, just, just as you said that, I was just making a quick list of those who uh, have kicked on in age uh, and well, I've got top of my head, right? Goldstein, Zeeble, Hall, Greenwood, who's a recruit, uh, Walker, Cunnington, Anderson. Now, that, they are all um, late 20s, early 30s. So they're, unfortunately, the list profile has that little bit of a gap, right, between the late 20s to the early 20s and 18 to like 21, 22. So that, that's- You don't have a 25-year-old on your list. Well, that I, is, I, there you go. I, I, I didn't mind. know that. So it. yeah, so it quite, it, it, that's the that's the issues. And I'm sure our list management team are, are certainly aware of that. And that's something we will we, we'll need to address over the coming years. But it, it's also a good sign that, that we need those players. I mean, Goldstein's still fantastic. You know, he, he is terrific. And Paul, unfortunately, as as it stands, he he's done a hamstring may miss um, first week or two of the season. Greenwood looks like someone we need in. Um, unfortunately, due to the, due to the circumstances around Cunnington, um, and Anderson has come back, so that that's good news. So there, there can there's certainly some assistance there. And Josh Josh Walker, as I said, he's probably talked into playing on a um, bit of an insurance policy down back. So look, there's a lot of experience there, and as you say, there's a, there's that gap. So. Um, that that will naturally um, rectify in years to come. And that, that's truly where we're at. We can't deny um, there's a bit of pain to come, certainly this season, and I think probably one or two more years after that. I hope it's shorter. I hope it's um, a complete misread by myself and our fans. And look, the, the, the pain's minimal, but um, look, we've been around footy long enough. And look, you're a Melbourne supporter. Mate, I, was about, to, I yeah. was about to say that. I was about to yeah. say you probably get people going, why do you back for North? Why do you back for North? Because I got that for years. Why are you back from Melbourne? Why would you go to somebody else? And I said, listen, I know I'm going through a lot of pain and I know it's, it's a nightmare at the moment. But once it pays off, sit back and go, it was worth it. Now, I didn't expect it to be worth it last year. I thought it might be this year or the year after. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I look at your mob and I go, the direction's there. You've got some older heads and they're great older heads. Like if you're a young ruckman and you're learning off Todd Goldstein, what more could you ask for? If you're a young midfielder, then you've got someone like Ben Cunnington showing you the ropes. If you're a um, someone playing off half back, etc., and you've got Jack Zebel showing you, you know, he, bigger body, been around for many, many years. What's he up to? He's up to he's going to play his two fiftieth this year, which has come up a lot quicker than I I, I thought. You have got some cracking forwards, like you have got two great pillars to build yourselves around. You've got something there, and I just you've just got to give it time. You have got to get it. Let it breathe. It's like a, it's like a bourbon. All right, you can't yeah, just drink yeah. the bourbon after a year or two. It doesn't. But give it five, give it six, give it seven years to develop the flavors, develop the maturity. Because once it once you get to taste that success, oh my goodness gracious, you want more of it. I'm I'm buoyant about your mob as well too. And the funny thing is, you had a four seventeen and one season last year. Yet if you look at that, the first half was mm, it was it was pretty six average. Six, yeah, it, yeah, it was pretty. Your second half of the year was a lot better than some clubs who did finish higher than you on the ladder. Yeah. Oh, Larky kicked 42 goals last season, which is phenomenal in a wooden spoon team. And, and, and we rely on him so much. I actually feel sorry for him a lot of the time. We, we just pray to God that he marks the ball every time we go down because we, he had little support. Hopefully, Coleman Jones um, um, chips in a little bit this season for him, working his way forward. The Goldstein experiment 
seems to be happening. I'm not sure I agree with it, though, um, playing him forward. I'm not sure I'd bother resting him forward a lot. Um, perhaps they could try one of the backs, maybe you know, occasionally resting Zeeble forward or someone else, someone from the midfield forward working out. Maybe Greenwood. Greenwood had some time from memory of the Crows forward, so he might be one who drifts forward. Um, but, yeah, well, that, look, the, well, the forward Greenwood's line Greenwood's 190, so he's got some height, yeah. so why wouldn't yeah. you throw him yeah. down yeah. there? Yeah, I, look, I, I think that we have to be – this is a year we can certainly experiment. I, 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 I don't think that we should be locking players into positions during this phase. It's not the right thing to do. Um, we use the time wisely. We pump games in the kids. I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit brutal the way I, I think. I would rip the bandaid off for a lot, a few players that are, to me, just getting games for the sake of it. However, I also understand the argument of. They need support. We can't just throw like you, you know. We I'm sorry to refer to Melbourne all the time, but if you throw like we all remember what happened to Jack Watts at the start, and and the poor kid lost his confidence, it was completely shot. So we we also have to bear that in mind if we're going to just play the kids all together and have a young captain who <laughs> thrown in the deep end like it was at Melbourne, then that could go that could backfire. So North hasn't gone down the path of which I was hoping for, like someone like a Sim can be captain this year. North hasn't gone down that path this year. Stuck with Zebel, so one more year. And then I think it will rotate, and then I think we'll see someone like – if he keeps his form, which I'm, I'm sure he will, if he keeps his form in 12 months down the track, I think he would probably be captain as it stands. I think – and even from a backline perspective, like you've got Ben Mackay down there. Like this guy's 198, 95 kegs. He's a Super. big boy, yeah. and he – like you wonder if he's actually the – if there is a twin brother. I just reckon they just change jumpers for different clubs <laughs> because well, at wouldn't, both ends wouldn't of the ground. Wouldn't mind, I just I wouldn't mind say, both. Wouldn't it's mind, always mind both in. Well, well, he was well. Harry was um, had a contract, wasn't he? I think yeah, yeah last I, year or during the last oh, year. So well, I think it's all almost like, like oh, the brothers. Don't sound like right? a St Kilda supporter. Oh, we've got both the Long brothers. <laughs> oh, sorry, the both both well, the King brothers. The, this thing, the North Norths had this for a long, long time, right? So I remember when Brent Harvey. The rumours were circulating that um, there was a, something in his contract that needed to get his brother across from Essendon. Which he did, Shane, of course, um, and unfortunately Shane didn't live up to AFL level, but he's a, you know still a super local player. I think he goes and, and then, plays local and kicks a thousand. That's right, North Heidelberg, correct. Yep. And then uh, and then you know Anthony Stevens' brother played there for a bit, and then um, Swallow's brother was David was linked to North. I'm like, geez, we're obsessed with trying to get brothers across to the club, aren't we? So anyway, we've, we've let it go, and um, it's probably better for I mean, uh, yeah, who, who am I to judge? But it seems like it's better for brothers to be at separate clubs, so they because they're always going to be compared, aren't they? And the good thing about these boys is they're – Well, it is compared to the pair, isn't it? You're always going to get that. I mean, Um, yeah, yeah, Ben, Ben for me, he's a super individual and, um, yeah, I love the bloke and he's stood tall in in a team that's uh, had obviously limited success so far in his career. So I'm hoping he's there in a few years' time, you know, that um, he can hold up a flag like, you know, your boys have done it tough. And I remember going back to the mid-90s, like I'm old enough to remember someone like Ian Fairley at the end of his career, played the 96 Premiership and he went forward, took a mark, kicked the goal in the grand final. I – one of the greatest moments as a club club favourite to kick a goal in a grand final was that was special. So um, that's all I can do, Pep. So I can only think back to grand finals, mate. It's been a long time, well, twenty three well, years since ninety nine now for us. So I only have to think about about one hundred and fifty eight <laughs> days for mine. So it took me a while. I've, I didn't see anything before that. I saw a couple of losses. Now I I've feel sorry ask, for your um your alcohol cabinet's getting good working over. I'd no, still no, 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 no. You get used to it after a while. I'm just more concerned now that now that we've won one. What do we do? Like I'm, I'm nervous. I'm well, you win nervous one. Now. You win one at you win one at the uh, the big ground, don't you? You win yeah, one. Well, I want one at the big, the big ground. I can retire. Yeah. Hang, hang it up. I've got to ask you, David Noble. What I know there was you had um, Scotty in there for quite a while, and he got the most out of that. You had Shorey come in, which looked looked okay at the start, but then it just realised for whatever reason it just it just didn't work out. You know, that's not not for me to comment on. They picked someone. A little bit random initially when they thought, well, are we going to go down this track? We saw what happened with Fags up up in Brisbane, success with that. They've brought this guy in and it's almost he said, all right, this is my direction. I'm, all, I'm literally resetting the club. And I, there is no better guy for North Melbourne right now than um, David Noble. What, what's, what's your impression of him? Do you agree with me? What, what do you yeah, think? No, I do. I do. I mean, there will be a section of North Melbourne supporters like, Jesus, I hope we've got it right this time. Like we, we've had a couple of cracks at it, um, and there's a few that don't trust the board. Now Ben Buckley has gone, or he's he's, he's set to leave, so um, that we have to leave that behind us. Um, so there's going to be those sections supporters like, if this is a stuff up, it's all on him. 
But I think that the, this is on Paul Ruse, okay? So this is Paul Ruse um, suggested David Noble, and we listened to him. And so I, I think the club has done the right thing uh, going down that path of getting someone who's experienced like Paul Ruse, and look what he's done at Melbourne. Um, so you, you, the recommendation was the right one. And I think for David Noble, he's an uh, – look, again, outside looking in, he seems like a, an arm around the uh, around the back of the players and it's come, bring them all together. He's kind of a, a motivator at the same time. He's a bit quirky from what I hear. He has, he's got random tattoos I, I hear and all this sort of stuff. It's just, he's just a quirky kind of guy. I, like he's, um, someone was telling me about um, some things floating around his desk and all this type of thing. It, it's just extraordinary. He's such a quirky kind of guy. So I, mean, I think for the players, he's quite relatable as well. Maybe it helps that his son's on an AFL list and he can actually relate to that generation. I, I think that's, Perhaps that's a good thing. I think um, it's a so great look, thing. Uh, look, early days. I mean, it, he, look, footy's tough. It's, it's going to be judged on wins and losses. Perhaps he's got one more year that people won't look at that. But um, I, I think he's going to have a little bit of pressure 2023. But 22, look, I think I'm sure we'll talk about it in a second. But I, I will be disappointed if we had less than six wins. I, I think right now we're looking for that little bit of growth. It's got to be, it's got to be um, six wins. So. Um, who rings on a mo- who rings on a landline <laughs> these days? Come on, people! I've been one for a I long agree. Time. Look, I've actually I've actually picked you guys to not finish bottom. Like that's that's how confident oh, I've got. Another couple of teams that I'm sitting at back going, yeah, they're actually in more trouble too because yes, they may be higher, but they don't have a core. They don't have something to lean back on. Now you did play a practice match quite recently against the D's, and look, don't look at the last result, but from what I saw in the first. I'd say half. There was there was some excitement there. One of the guys that stood out to me a little bit, and he's he's played twelve games. Charlie Lazaro. There's just a little bit of spunk spunk about him. You did mention um, the hyphen, the the prized Jason Horn Francis. Yep, he's, Horn Francis. He's, he's, look, regardless, he's going to be a gun. You can just just you just know by looking at him. I've seen the, the highlights of him taking speckies and you know Air Horn Francis last week. But you've just got a really nice nucleus. Taron Thomas looks like he's finally realised I can play at this level. And he, he's the one. Look, I look, my my mail is um, that he's the one who's going to go bang this year. He, look, I think everyone thinks not. Like we're just so excited to see Horn Francis, and everyone's on my hand. Horn Francis. I've had people stop me and say, "Ah, uh-uh, ah, the one you need to watch this year is Taron Thomas. He he's going to be the one that everyone talks about." Um, uh, so so look, we will wait and see. I mean, you talk there about to Lazaro. He, he's an interesting one. Um, I, I think, yeah, yes, he was okay against your your mob in the practice game. He, he's he's another. He's got to improve his um, kicking. Uh, to me, he's, we've got a few. Don't get me wrong, but again, we, if he wants to take that next step and get in this team, and it's for his position, it, it's going to be difficult for him. He needs to nail down a position and and nail it kicking. I, I, look, all us North supporters have had a gutful of how bad our kicking's been <laughs> for many years. Truly, it's been. Can we just scrap so, the North? So bad. Can we just scrap the North off your name and our teams would be exactly the same? Ah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, you're in now. We almost now, merged I mean, in the mid-80s. Elite. We almost merged. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, oh, look, I, I, um, again, I guess that's probably a part of the situation where the, the guys may feel implied pressure during games that they panic and they feel like they need to kick straight away. So perhaps it's just a confidence thing. That's what I'm hoping, Peps, that that is just it. Um, however, yeah, I, I think the coach and the staff need to say, guys, take your time. Yeah, caught holding the ball, so be it. Um, nail your kicks. Nail your kicks. And, you know, it's also, I understand if you're kicking inside 50, we need to make sure there's a target and they've got space in, in forward line, so on and so forth. So we all need to work together. And and I hope after that practice game that they sit down, watch the footage and just say, there's a lot to break down here, guys. It's a good thing it's happened before the season start. Let's let's get these things right. Because to me, the clear, the clear fault throughout that whole game um, was – uh, poor kicking and out in the full. Um, I, I left someone off my list a little earlier of yeah. that experience list in Jared Pollock. And he, I don't know if he was dragged at halftime. I don't know if he was dragged. He certainly did not play in the second half. Um, well, I didn't yeah. see the rest. I, I saw earlier. Well, maybe, the, I didn't, maybe he was I saw there. We the just didn't see any on. of him. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to say he, he was out. I saw him kick out in the full and turn it over and, and kick the ball on the ground. And from, from like North fans, he drives North fans crazy because his lack of attitude. Or no attitude um, last couple of years and went walkabouts uh, during the uh, uh, what, 2020 season. Yeah. Um, I understand he's had injuries and that type of thing, but 
uh, my God, he needs to pull his finger out. Well, I can uh, tell you now. I, 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 I would, so it's up to me. I wouldn't play him. If it was up to me, I, I would say don't play him. Let's push on the kids. Jared, you've been delisted for a reason. Look, you there got, is you a reason. And I think than, yeah. he came across to North on you know, really good dollars. Oh, from, he was still from be port, on that sort of money. From Port. Yeah, yeah. And my co-host, the Jamie, the J-Dog Wallace, when I asked him about Pollock, he went, <sighs> he, he laughed. He said, you can have him. And I'm like, you sure? Because he was, he, you know, he was all right. Remember, he wanted to leave Brisbane to come to, to Adelaide when Brisbane had that exodus. But then when I asked him, I said, well, why would you, yeah, why aren't you happy? And he goes, I can't kick. He's, and his care factor's not there. Well, and I saw that last go. year. Amen. His care factor's just not there. I, 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 you've, I, you've been rookied. Oh, he's been rookied for the sake of it. What? Is it just because he's an older body? That's the only thing. Like, he's pushing. If you're 29 and being rookied, you think that you might get the message that, mate, you are literally, and you're being rookied on the bottom team. Wouldn't you start to think that, look, if I don't pull my finger out, I'm, I'm gone? And it doesn't look like he's got the, he hasn't got the message as well. Um, but, I mean, you know, it, it is, he's not going to change. I mean, what, what are we expecting miracles? He's, he's not a guy who will chase and tackle. And, um, and, and mind you, he doesn't have to do that. If he kicks well, runs well, runs positions, works hard for his teammates, that's all I expect. That's all I want. I, in fact, I don't expect it, but that's what I would like. Okay, <laughs> would so like he's just uh, unfortunately he's just a, he's just a poor kick, and he's late. I just can't handle lazy players. I just can't laziness is that's you can't, unforgivable, unforgivable. You, you can't be lazy in today's game. Oh, You'll he's, get found out. He's pure lazy, pure laziness all the time from him. Can I ask you, you know? about now? What I think one of the, the smartest decisions I've seen over a uh, preseason was getting. Huge because he made a massive impact when he went up to Gold Coast last year. And I think Gold Coast is sitting back going, shit, I think we stuffed that one up. And that's totally understandable. I know that he said, I'm going to stay, et cetera. But when a club says, hey, we're going to offer you this over so many years, why wouldn't you take it? He's going to be awesome for you. But the loss and the loss of Ben Cunnington, how much is that going to impact? Um, maybe not just from his perspective, but – for the rest, having that stuff, having that bigger body that we spoke about a little bit earlier on around those kids, I think that's where it's going to be making the most because he's going to look back and go, I don't have to do everything now, but yeah. these kids are going to get smashed. Oh, look, Ben Cunnington, to me, I was, I was just thinking about this the last couple of weeks. I think he's one, He's actually one of the greatest North Melbourne players in history. So if he played if he played in, in the 90s, he, he would be as good, if not better, than Anthony Stevens, and he's held in high regards. So that to me, that's how good Ben Cunnington is. So without him, which is obviously it looks like it's going to be the case certainly for a little while, and hopefully he's back at some stage. And priority for him is his health and his family. So there's no pressure on him at all because he's done what he's done for us. So in terms of just footy, footy wise, uh, yeah, we're we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him. At the same time as you're saying, we, we have um, budgeted for that, for one of a better word, uh, getting Hugh Greenwood in. So that kind of worked out well for us. And what a dumb, dumb decision by the Gold Coast Suns. It's extraordinary. Oh, think, Their history. Well, I'm going to be talking. No, nah, it's all right. Because when I get to the Gold Coast preview, that'll be with uh, uh, the uh, Tommy Roker, who I did last year's Gold Coast. And don't worry, no, it's a little bit like you. He won't hold back whatsoever because oh, I'll ask him yeah. about the Greenwood decision and I reckon his head's going to explode too. But oh, you're talking about a guy who's no, a two-time just... best and fairest and an all-Australian. That's right. And you're still Darlin's... listening to someone like that? I mean, really? No, no, that was Ben Cunnington. But when oh, you're sorry. looking at when, but I think from a from a football perspective, I don't think yeah. anybody has a bad word to say about that bloke because people no. just appreciate the way he plays. He's like, man, he's like Todd Goldstein. Like goodness gracious, he's the oldest bloke on your list. He's going to be 34 by next season or this season coming up. You know, he's one single All Australian. He's also got best and fairest to his name. He's been in the top 40 of the L- record tap outs for seasons. And he just keeps getting better. I think what they should do with Goldstein is what is a little bit of a hybrid approach. So when you're playing probably bottom, I'll say bottom eight teams, throw him down forward, give the kids a kick. But when yep. you're playing the higher echelon, you just cannot do that. Otherwise, they're going to destroy. So yep. I reckon if they do that, that model, rather than just putting all the chips into the basket and going, mate, we're going to go ruck and then drop you down forward, it's not going to work. I think you, you have to play it a little bit smarter than that. But I, but I think, once again, Noble's gone, hey, I'm, I'm going to stand behind these guys and you're going to have a crack. And, yes, we, we might get beaten, but you, if you're going to learn from that from years to come. Yeah. 
Isn't it? Yeah. Like, Pebs, Pebs, I'm not sure if you follow um, American football or not. I certainly do. Mm-hmm. The only position of a, of quarterback you can compare to in our game is rucks, funny enough, because you've got the the, the head honcho. In your case, you've yep. got Maxi Gorn, and then you've got the understudy, um, which is debatable whether it's Sherry or Coleman Jones in our case. So yep. quarterbacks, that you've got that, like, hang on, I'm the big dog. I'm still holding my position. And then you've got the understudy who wants to be there, but also wants your help. Yep. Um, that's that's how I compare it. So I think North Actually, End that's a very good point. Rec- recognise that one. We, we recognise that um, Goldie's near the end. However, we want him there. I mean, he's been super weak in week out, but you make a good point. We, we need to start looking to the next generation and give Sherry that chance. Now, there, there are spends, which I think is ridiculous, have already made up their mind on him. I think he still needs some time to develop. Ruckman take that long <sighs> to, to develop. So you're not going to get for him. You're not going to get like a, a Draper from Essendon who's, you know, he was touted, but is going to bolt overnight. You're not going to get. Oh, that takes so long. So long. Not every long. club can have yeah. a, a Luke Jackson who is is really yeah. hybrid like. You, not every club's going to get a Brody Grundy. No. It does take. No. Like, Max Gorn, and you mentioned him, he had two knee Ricos. And it took for a game down at Geelong for him to go, I can play at this level. Mm. And then five All Australians later, Premiership captain. You've got to yeah. give them time because it's no, it's, the, it's the it's the only unique position in my eyes on the ground. Mm. It is a unique. No, that, that, position. That's, that, that, look, that's my point on quarterback. You know, it's it's it is so unique. And look, oh, I'm I'm actually glad. I'm one of those fans who's actually glad there's no third man up anymore because you, you, we need to keep the uh, authenticity of our game, yep. the ruckman, because it, it would die. Let's be honest. It, you know, pointless. You might as well get to some scumbag in the ruck and tap, and it doesn't matter who it is. Could be a midfielder. So I think the third man up um, has been a good call. I can see your face. I know you don't, don't agree. Um, okay. I'm, you don't and agree? I'll tell you That's why right. in a moment why I wish the well, third Well, when you've got Maxie Gorn and, and Lee Jackson, I can't believe you don't, don't agree. I mean, it would take those guys out of it. In, it, like, it would take, really. but I think from about, the problem is with the AFL, right, they stripped everything back that made the game unique to a certain degree. So the one thing, the, here's the bugbears that I have, and if you listen to me on a Tuesday night with, with the J-Dog, right, I go about this all the time. The third man up, if you ever look at what the third man up did, uh, third man up was always coming over the back of the pack and smacking the ball forward, like getting it out of the ball up zone, especially for a boundary throw. Probably not as much at a, as a, at a one-on-one ball up around the ground, but really at those uh, those clear. Now they just drop it straight at their feet. It, it, it congested again as well too. So I would love somebody to come over and ping it. You don't have to do it every single time. I would love to see it to, to clean up. Even something as simple as like kicking the ball to yourself out of fullback. Like, what's the point of having the square anymore if you're not going to have to? Yeah, no, I agree. With that. You know I those little that. things, those little yeah. things that you know that they've tried to speed the game up, but it's actually slowed it down in a way. Yeah, so I mean, we're going call the ball. The ball's a ball. But I, I think people are obsessed with scoring and speeding the play up. I mean, it, to me, this, if you're worried about scoring, like, okay, let's award twenty five points for a goal. I mean, who cares about? I don't want, understand why people care about scoring so much. I really don't. As long as it's a good quality game, you still want a good. You still want good defenders in the game, right? Or do we want dud defenders so there's always a goal? I mean, I think I, it's, I I think it's more along the line. Argument. Of, and, and I can understand. You, 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 defense wins. Defense wins grand finals. But teams yeah. don't want to see you know a fifty fifty game where it's they want to see goals being kicked because that's what it's all about. That's what you cheer for. You don't cheer for a tackle. You don't cheer for a ball up. Oh, I think there needs to I'll, be. I'll, I'll argue that. I, I, I love the, the, the t- a tackle and ball. That's one of the great. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's that. Yeah, we cheer for that. We go nuts, especially after a few Jimmy Cans or a few uh, $14 <laughs> Carlton drafts at the ground. Mid strength. I mean, but don't take him out of the ground. You might get fined. <laughs> God, don't, don't worry about it. I had mid strength Jim Beams at the, in the MCC. I almost fell over. I didn't even know they existed. But I think the fact of the matter is, is that what we want to see is we want scoring. I've always said if they incentivized, if you kick over 100 points, extra point or an extra two points? No. Nah. No, because no if you me. think – no, no, but if you think about it, if you're a club getting to the last quarter and you're selling 75 points, <laughs> yes, you might be down, but if you've got that incentive to kick those extra four goals or five goals to get to that 100, I think there's got to be something there because at the moment, what, what's the incentive to kick a high score? Percentage. I could kick 40 points. If my opponent kicks 35, big whoopee deal. doesn't nah. make a difference. Sorry, I was, I, look, I, I understand your point. I've heard that, heard that before. It's just, it just, you're trying to look after your percentage. And look, and when we've got a draft system and we don't have a promotion relegation, it's percentage That's maybe and right. it, that matters. Well, so you had look. a percentage of 70.27, well, the lowest in the well, league last year. You want to, pre- well, you well, want well, to protect I mean, them. Talking about early in the season, from recollection, after when we're zipping six, it was like 40-something percent. So 
look, we we, we so much more competitive after round six. So oh. I guess my point is, I'm I am. We always start the season so slow, North. Like I, I can't explain it. Round one, we just I think we won one the year before last or something like that. But out of the last 13, 14 years, I think we've won one or two. It's just so bad the way we start. It doesn't so, I mean, matter. If, if you're a Hawthorne fan listening to this, you're going, hello, we're a big chance in round one. But <laughs> I, I would just we, I just want to see the boys start well are. because I don't I don't want to see us lose confidence early on because then it can be a really long season and and we still got a really young list. And um, perhaps you've got numbers in front, of you, in front of you probably about ages compared to last year, but there's no doubt we've got younger. So... Um, I just hope that the young kids don't lose confidence, I guess is what I'm just trying to say. And um, that first six weeks is a key, probably not just for us, I guess. It's probably for every team. Everyone look at the first six weeks and goes, we need to set up our season. I'm sure you've, you know, being premiers, one of the top six teams in the draw, you look at your first six weeks and perhaps then you go, gee, you know, we really need to win at least four of these to finish top four. Well, you you are right. You were 23.7 last year and you've dropped down to 23.5. So not a massive deal, but like I said, you've got a couple of guys at the top. You've got a couple of guys at the top of, like I said, once they drop off. I I, I keep saying this. I enjoyed watching North Melbourne games last year because you had a crack. There was other teams that were rolling around to might right, um, which might rhyme with Adelaide Schmoes um, or the (laughs) Pawthorn Dorks that – Probably dorks. I like yeah, that's a much better the, the, name. The dorks didn't um so like I, said, I think you're in a better position than both those two teams, full stop. Yeah. And look, that's why look, I reckon that's, that, that that's and it's I, gonna I, be a I slow bounce. You them, well, if you ask those fans of those teams, I'll say no, nah, we'll finish above north. So it's it's I understand that. It's gonna be that bottom four four to six teams are all gonna say, Hey, you you've got the man from the Gold Coast Suns coming on. Who will say, No, nah, I think we'll finish above north. And I'll say we'll finish above the Suns. So that that's all it's it's just that's totally up for debate and I can understand there. Um uh, logic behind that, and I'm sure they can understand why we think we're going to be on the up this year. I don't think they are, Ross, to be honest. I think okay. Gold Coast. No, no, I'll tell you what, when Ben King went down, their season went. Yes. Yeah, no, that's, that's right. And that, that's that. tough. And I think they yeah. just – I could just see Stewie Jew in the coach's box just go, can this get any worse for me? Because they've got the 18th youngest yeah. list and they've got the 18th yeah. you know, younger games. Like it's, it's I feel sorry for him because I think he's a good coach, but, yeah, I think he's, he's – well, with Clarko circling, I think he's in trouble, isn't he? I think, think Clarko circling and Clarko's going um, get me up anyway. there as well. All right, <laughs> let's put the agates on the line, young man. Let's have a yes. look at the let's have a look at the season. So, who's going to be the breakout star for the North Melbourne Kangaroos this year? Just look, North Melbourne. I, I don't like split. the Kangaroos part. Just no, North no, look, Melbourne. That's, oh, just give me the hey, North Melbourne. You, you've just you've just triggered me. There's been this off season rebranding, which is probably where you got it from. That we've rebranded from North Melbourne Football Club to North Melbourne Kangaroos in all press releases. No, and it's it, North Melbourne Football Club. Oh, it's no, we're just just North Melbourne. Like, why why do we need to say North Melbourne Kangaroos? We don't say Melbourne Demons expresses its regret on rah 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 like Hawthorne Hawks, Collingwood Magpies. Uh, we do, just don't do uh, that. Uh, yeah, it's only Western Bulldogs because it's not it's a gener- generic first name, right? So, well, anyway. do you know what? Well, the whole reason that they did that was to try and encapsulate uh, the Western region. They just go back to Footscray. Oh, God. Just I'm go sure back to Footscray ask. because I don't know if you've tried to buy a house in Footscray recently. You need a bit of cash. It's well, not the old footscray. And, and what's the logic more? in being in the Western Bulldogs and the senior men's team, yet the VFL team's footscray? What's the logic in that? Anyway, we go totally off. Uh, <laughs> so, no, breakout player. I couldn't split LDU and uh, Phillips. Yeah. Um, look, the, the reason behind that is is I, I think the expectations are going to be off. There's a bit, a bit of pressure on those two young fellas being high draft picks. But now that we've got Horn, Francis, Simpkin and Thomas – in, I think, uh, and I think the focus is probably going to be on those three uh, young lads, that I think LDU and Phillips will slip under the radar. They feel the pressure off, and I, I feel them being breakout players. Now, some may say about LDU that he probably broke out last year a little bit. I, I'm, I'm not sure he's quite broken out yet, but I, I, I think this is the year people are going to say, oh, right, LD, LDU. Okay, here he is. And, and Will Phillips is the same for me. I, I think yeah. another one that um, – Probably struggled a little bit um, in his first year, uh, but but to me, um, someone who can kick, hallelujah, um, a, a great vision, and I, I love his work ethic. We talked before about uh, number 13, this bloke, uh, with 29 on his back uh, for a reason, for a reason. He, he's uh, going to be something special. So. Well, I can tell you now, you've got a three-year difference between the two. So if LDU can take that step, because he has got the yep. body – he has got the body, 187 and 85 kegs. He can definitely do it. Then you've got to go another three years later who's coming in second season of footy, who's 180 and 80. Like, 
a traditional sort of midfield size. Yep. You can build around that. Yeah, definitely. No, totally. around uh, that. And look, that's a we just we just hope like your your midfields all come together that that that's how we mirror that success and and the boys just want to play with each other and you, your like, your midfield is actually brilliant to watch. It's it's so fantastic how happy they are and they just run around and have a great time. Honestly, could you have more fun watching a team playing like that? I just want our boys to look like they're having fun. And, and, no, that look. I, I guess it's everybody's happy when they win. We've win. only been happy yeah. for one season. Right. Do, do you really like? I reckon for th- good three or four seasons, I reckon they've had a bit of fun. You don't reckon? Last year was the most fun that they ever had. They they seemed to. There were a lot of um, bees to the honey pot. We could okay. get the contested ball, but we just wouldn't play. Wouldn't say play for each other, but everybody knew their role. Last year, for the first time, we went. Hey, listen, if we're going to go somewhere, you're going to have to sacrifice this. You're going to have to do this. You're, and they just all bought into the to the culture. That goes back to Paul Ruse. And I remember when you said. Mm. Paul Roos earlier on, he started that culture. He said, this is what we need to do, but the players yeah. drive that culture. Now, Goldstein, it seems to me, is the player that drives the culture within that group. Just, I don't know, from an outside perspective. You need to find that next person who is going to drive the culture because yep. the coach can only be responsible about getting them ready and preparing them for game day. But once those players get on the park, it's up to the players to drive those standards. And one of the best things that we ever did was get Jake Levy to the club because he, from a leader's oh, yeah. perspective, he just drives it. You've got kids there that you probably don't even think about at the moment that are going to drive your culture. And you're going to say, where did this come from? Remember when Richie Vandenberg was made uh, captain of Hawthorne, they went, he's not even the best. It's not about being the best player. It is the standard that they set. There is going to be and someone there why- that you are not going to come out of and you're going to go, yep. Yep. wow. Oh, Pep's a good point. I mean, I think that's why Zeebel's still captain, to be honest. I mean, we all yep. know he's not our best player. Probably not in our best 10. It's not having to crack at Jack. It's just a matter of um, that's where it's at. He's set professional levels. He's a leader. And he, he, I think he actually enjoys being captain. And you can actually, when you're developing team, right, you think about this, you're a halfback captain. You can see the game in front of you. Like, <laughs> I'm hoping he does more this year than rather than behind him. But um, you can see what's unfolding in the midfield. So he, And being a former midfielder, he can actually describe and point out what you're doing right and wrong with position. So I'm sure that's why he's still captain. I'm sure that's why or half the reason why he's playing where he's playing. So uh, look, that's a good point. And then obviously 12 months' time, I think we will pick a new captain. And talking about Goldstein, it's interesting. A lot of North fans um, thought he should have been captain now. So that's a that's a yeah, great great talking point. Um, but, I mean, perhaps, perhaps you know, you and me, some, a lot of fans um, think too much about captaincy. Like, do we, do we worry about it too much? Like, it's it's maybe it's just a – you see leadership groups now. How many of the Gold Coast Suns? Outrageous, like seven. Oh, I don't know how many, but some oh, it's funny. They used to go to a lot of them, like a lot mm. of people. And some clubs now have just got three the, the almost the traditional captain, couple of vice captains, or uh, captain, VC, DVC. They've sort of I, shrunk I, I like it down the, a bit. I like the, the, the idea of having a uh, captain or a leader per line. So you've got a rux I, leader, I you've got a mids leader, you've got a forward leader, yeah. you've got a defensive leader. I think that that makes sense, but having seven or eight. Leadership group. I mean, you, that's no. just you then again. Then it gets to the point you, you're offended when you're not in it because there's well, so many in it. So. You could be St Kilda, and at one stage you had um, basically you got a participation medal and you became captain <laughs> of that club. Uh, they were out of control. Who's going to be the breakdown? So unfortunately, uh, Noble's going to have to tap somebody at the end of the shoulder and go uh, tap tap someone on the shoulder at the end of the year and go. You know what? Good luck, mate. We can't take you any further. You're you're pretty much cool. It's just, I hate doing this, but you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult task and it, it will happen. Um, look, I think Walker's going to be the first one, but that's a yep. pretty obvious. I mean, not, not, we're not, I certainly don't blame you. We're not, oh, you've gone low hanging fruit getting, with Joshy yeah, there. No, well, I have, look, Jared Pollock to one, for one, is like, uh, I, yeah, I sound like I'm picking on, the, on him this whole podcast. But uh, um, it, it, look, the, I think Father Time may hit Jack Zebel pretty quick. Yeah. Um, when he's not speedy. Um, yeah, he, he, look, I, I think maybe he's got another year in here after this year is just helping out a little bit. But um, look, when you, when you don't have your legs and you're a former midfielder, and that, that makes it really tough um, to hang on. And we've got so many midfielders. I understand where he's playing now. Don't get me wrong. I understand the halfback, but anyone can chip in halfback, in my opinion. So look, it may be him. I don't want to end anyone's careers. <laughs> I find this really hard. But look, look, it's. Probably look those three blokes may be in trouble at the end of the season, and, and that's just natural in a team that's you know 
finish coming off 18th and we probably will finish bottom four again. So we can't just all of a sudden say, no, happy days, everything's fine here, let's keep our blokes over the age of 30. No, that's you not going to happen. You've only so got – We have only to got, make hard calls. You've only yeah. got eight players over the age of 28. Yeah. <laughs> you, like yeah. I said, your, 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 your age profile, some clubs would bleed for because you're just so young. It's, mm. it's, I'd rather be, like I said, like you than a Geelong because Geelong have yeah. gone completely the opposite. They're too top heavy and when that falls over, they're not in a position and they've but, given away all their draft picks as well too. They don't have any, they don't have any currency. Yeah, uh, Peps, it all comes down to what, we, what I said earlier about postseason. So who we bring in, um, if we can bring um, players in, in the off in the off season or post season, so it, it comes down to that as well in terms of those blokes, including Zebel. So if we're able to bring in um, some good, like you talk about dream scenario about May or Lever bringing someone like those types in for North, which is I'm sure that that's what we're aiming for, um, then he's in trouble. But if we can't get anyone in, he may he may have to play on for another season. I mean, look at you know Tarrant's gone to Richmond, and um, that, that's a hole for us. As much as I, as much as he had actually had a pretty ordinary year, tr- truthfully, like if anyone's been Real and watch North Melbourne games in 2021. Tarrant, I don't know what happened. It looked like we just totally lost his confidence and that wasn't the way he used to play, you know, all Australian. Um, was it, it was debatable. He was in the squad at least. Was he a little Australian? It, it happens. It, was. it just happens. Yeah, and, and, you know, former Sid Barker medalist. And, and then that was, you know, sadly he said, I'm off to Richmond and he might get his confidence back playing in a, in a top team. All the best to him. He's given us great service. But I'm a little bit disappointed on Tarrant just quickly, Pess, because – he did shoulders early on in his career at North, and we stuck by him for many, many years. And then the first time someone tapped him on the shoulder, say, "Hey, we're interested. You want to come across?" He left. That's the only thing that doesn't sit well with me. Um, I understand what his age and wanting to win a premiership. I get that, but that bit, just as a fan of yeah. a club who stood by someone, you're like, mm, "Well, 2016, no. he did win the BNF and make all Australian." So yeah, we're right on that. It's yeah, not so, the only. So, it's not the only person. Richmond had it with. Um, Higgins as well too, all the stuff that he went through and then he decided to leave. So it does happen for whatever reason. Yep. You know. You suck it up. Okay. It's to, <laughs> no, no, no. It, it just happens. Where's my tissue? No. Everybody's a little bit different. You just can't go with that. What's a headline that's going to set off? What's the headline? We're going to get to the end of the year, round yep. 22. Mad Monday is kicking off in a couple of days, but we open up the Herald Sun back page. What's the headline for North Melbourne? Round 22 headline. Um, better things to come, let's yep. hope. Yep. Um so I'm going to, so we miss finals. That's starting to bleeding obvious. But I, I hope that we see, and I think we will see some really exciting games from our mids. Like Horn France is going to light up in a few games. Like I'm talking, we might kick four or five goals in a game and have 25, 30. I mean, we will just we'll wet our pants if when that happens. He's, That's if, he us, Matt, you know? if he has a couple of Matt, if he has a couple Matt Rowe like games, I, th- I really, I think he will. I think he's. I mean, I, I was. We were all in lockdown, right, in 2021. I was watching Sandfall and him playing because he was touted to be number one, and I watched that prelim, and I watched – oh, my God, this guy. He's just – he's next level. Phenomenal. And just, I, look, just I've, tank, I've watched – Just keep tanking. Uh, just keep tanking. Oh, <laughs> well, imagine if we didn't. I mean, that's the totally the right thing to do. Like, in the end, we're just going, like, let's play well and not win like that last three or four games. Yeah. Like, don't – let's not oh, – I don't think – honestly, yet. I don't think you're tanked. <laughs> you're not like Melbourne. No, I think, look, tank, <laughs> tanking's right. a funny word. It's all, all about the way you interpret it. I think it's manipulated or, or worked plays into positions. Strategic. Strategic. And, and it's happened all the time. I mean, picking, picking on Melbourne they did for during that period was a disgrace when as many clubs oh. have done it in, over a period of time. But, oh, no, yeah, no, look, no. the headline, in terms of headline, better things to come, 2023. Um, and we, need, we need, look, oh, Kingy's been on our podcast talking about this. We need to just get 100 games into these blokes, you know, mid So we're talking about, th- that what's it? 75 three, game range is almost like that, that, yeah. that, nice, that nice point to be. Yeah. So tell, tell me, Pep's question without notice for you. Yeah. What's the um, Thanks, average King. games? Yeah. Average games of your midfields. What do you think? What is it? Average about games for our midfield? 20? Yeah. All right. I'll tell you in just a moment. Whilst I'm looking that up, Sorry, I'll that ask is a you question a question. That's right. Yeah. Let's put the agates on the chopping board now because it's not just about your team. I want to get a bit of a holistic perspective here. So who's going to be winning the flag in 2022 from what you can see? Oh, I just can't go past Melbourne. Really can't. So impressive in that practice game in that final series and the shackles and backs against the wall in that third quarter and against the dogs and I just went whoosh. Go. So impressive. So impressive. I just cannot go past the Ds. Um, yeah, look, I, I think the only question mark is a lot of fans will be saying, oh, yeah, now, but now we're back at the G and, you know, they only did it because it was a COVID. They, hey, hey, I, I'm, no, I'm not I'm a subscriber. Hearing you. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. You don't so, have to say um, it, but I'm hearing you. So I, I think I think it's the, uh, yeah, the Ds will do it. Um, yep. 
I'm preempting you to ask me about Coleman. I was about to Coleman ask about medalist. Coleman, yeah. Coleman. Col- so I think Tom Hawkins, but this is so tough because there's no dominant forward anymore. I mean, you could, you could make a case for one of your blokes. You know, I ben, actually have got a case for one of my blokes, and he was one of your ex-blokes. Yeah, Ben Brown. I actually wrote yep. that and I changed my mind. because I looked at, I just, just because I looked at the numbers and I thought, yeah, maybe I forgot about Tom Hawk and he probably should have won it last year. And But look, Coleman, this, now it's so hard to predict. It's so it hard is hard to predict. To predict because you, you go Harry Mackay. You're hardly kicking 50-something goals. I mean, what, did, what did he win with um, 60, uh, 60, Mackay in the end? 50, 60 Was he 60, plus, was he? Yeah, yeah 60, 60 plus. So, um, yeah, so look, look, like Tom Hawk, I think, you know, Cats, look, I think they're, Sneak in the finals. I don't think they're going to do any damage. There's a club that's in denial, by the way. Um, well, we know that. Oh, oh, they've got a coach who's in denial. Yeah. And, and, I've got um, the, and I've got the Geelong boys next week. That's going to be a great one to go through. Uh, look, but, I mean, I'm totally envious of Geelong's success. Don't get me wrong. I, I just think right now, Rock, you've, you've got to know where you're at. You've got to would know Would you rather be at. in your spot or would you rather be in their shoes? That's the question I'll oh, ask. Look, I'm, I'm, I wish I had the success I've they've had in the last 10, 15 years. Right, but right now, now. Right no, look, now. Right now, look, would you rather I'd rather be, be us because I, I know where we're going. I know. So, That's yeah. the thing as well. Uh, Brownlow medalist. Yeah, Christian Petrarca. Yep. It's just, I, I'm just, I, I love watching that bloke. And I'm not just saying this because you're a Melbourne fan. And I, trust me, I've said this to everyone. And I, I just love watching that bloke. I know everyone's going to say, oh, Bond tours. You know, you, you, you might say Clayton Oliver. I, for, oh, I'm, I'm a massive well, actually, fan. Actually, I've, I've got a soft spot both. for Maxi Gorn. Yeah. I've seen him do so many charity walks and stuff, Peps. Yep. Like, I've done a charity walk and I've seen him do it and he's the only AFL player around doing that type of thing. He's just so authentic, um, Gorney, but um, I'd love to see him win it, but I think Petrarca. Um, he's, 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 he's just so he's, special. His impact's on games now are just next level. And he's, uh, you but, don't have but, to talk about like, that grand final after they robbed him of the 40. Can, can I gracious. just say about the Brownlow, yeah. like I don't – I care little about the Brownlow for this reason. The, the four best players in AFL history have never won one. And you think of Wayne Carey, Ted Whitten, Lee Matthews, and I'm missing one other one. Who's Bobby the Flower. Greatest player? Bobby Flower. He there didn't win one either. Well, no, that's what, that, but, but to me, like, how do we look at this as a, such a prestigious award as fans or as an AFL community and just go, who's going to win the Brownlow? Like, no, it doesn't matter. It's like, the best player isn't the Brownlow winner. Yeah, a lot I think of the, the issue that a lot of people have now is that it's a midfielder's award. So there's a little, there's a lot mm. more validity behind the AFL uh, MVP because that's voted on by the players, and the coaches' award seem to Correct. have a lot more. So uh, for me, MVP above, yeah, M- MVP above Brownlow, and that was Bond yeah, last year. But yeah. that's not taking away from Sam Walsh because if you, oh, not Sam Walsh, uh, Ollie Wines. But if you had Ollie a look, Wines, there, the yep. top three Wines, yep, Bont, Tracker, Walsh, all pulled up, polled over thirty votes. Yep. If you'd gone back through history, that was enough to win it virtually every year except for maybe yeah. Dane Swannick. It's, but it's all midfielders, and I think that's what a lot of people are yeah. peeved with. Like you can kick a bag, but these days they say a bag's three. I always kick the ba- bag, mate. A bag is more than five because you need a bag Bruce. to carry more than what's in your hand. That's right. Um, that's right. And then you've got Lockie lock Neal. I'm sure you'd say, gee, this is a curse. You know, like, there's, there'd be so, some, so many players, some players will be saying, I'm not sure I want to win this because I'm worried about – What's happening in the following year? So it does. It's actually a burden on a lot of players. It'll be interesting to see how Ollie Wines copes um, yeah. this this coming yeah. year, being a Brownlow Medal winner. But um, no, Petrarca mate for me. Surely. Well, if you, I've had, I actually have an answer for you now. I'm not going to give you an average, but I'll put it this way: uh, Salem 130 games, Petrarca yeah. 127, Oliver 124, James Harms 122, Brayshaw 119. Look at that, and Look Jack Vardy 150. Yeah. So you're looking at about 120, 150, but they're all along the ages of Salem's the oldest at 26. Then it's Petrarca. Mm. So we're not talking about my mob because that's going to be in a few weeks' time, but they're in that yep. real sweet that's spot. Right. Uh, that, look, that's, that's exactly where we aim to be in four or five years' time. It's going You'll to be, get there. You'll get it's there. It's going to be tough. It's like there's a couple of years of hurt, but, yeah, we just have to suck it up as much as it now, is hard. Like to watching that game, watching the practice game against the Ds and seeing 88 points, you're just going, it's, oh, man. It's a, it's a oh, practice oh. game. To practice. practice. It was men versus and, and boys. Look, Simkin, right? Simkin and LDU was missing for on it. I know you had four players out too, right? Four premiership players didn't play, but um, seeing those uh, that, that that those errors and and those players not playing, you're kind of like, oh, how do we feel about this? So anyway, it's look and it's and it's accumulation. You want depth. I mean, you've got players now in your VFL team, and you go, they could easily play for any other team. Yeah. You know, you just. That it takes time. You've got to build it. So now, you need, talking you need, about you building things, because you're on a, you're on the ground. 
North Talk. What are the plans for North Talk? What can the listeners expect with uh, the single greatest North Melbourne podcast? Yeah, ever it's a big created? year for us, actually. Yeah, a big year. We've got we've got plans. We're for the first time we're hitting a studio, so we're recording in studios. Um, n- not every week, but certainly uh, yep. quite a number of weeks. And and plans for big guests as as we had in twenty twenty one. But we had our what we really didn't realize at the time our future chair woman, um, Dr. Sonia Hood. We had yep. um, who's now. Uh, going to be our chairwoman. I hope that's the right way to say. Yes, I don't know if I've got that. I think it's just chairperson. Anyway, we know who it is. Yep. <laughs> chairperson. Okay, there you go. Um, yeah. So, so David King set to join us again, which is exciting. Um, plenty of plenty of um, debriefing on some results. I'm hoping it's uh, more what cheery than not. No, debriefing. <laughs> what would actually what, what we have implemented this year? We, we're doing. We, we had a good win against the West Coast Eagles over there. Yep. Last year, and we did record it straight away, and we had a lot of great feedbacks uh, detecting the raw emotion. So yep. we're trialing uh, immediate post game shows. Um, so we're going to see how we go. Awesome. If we get, keep getting walloped every week, it's going to be difficult. But we're going to try it for certainly the first few weeks. Um, so yeah, post game shows, in studio shows. Um, this is our sixth season, uh, which is quite incredible. Uh, North Talk. So yeah, started it in twenty seventeen, and we're um, yeah working our way towards our hundredth episode this season, and we'll have a couple of big guests on this year are still working on a couple at the moment, but uh, it's going to be a big, big season. North Melbourne supporters, it's as simple as this. If you're not listening, like you're listening to this right now, first and foremost, it's a, it is the best North Melbourne preview you're going to get for season 22. Don't worry about all the commercial networks. This is where the heart and soul of your club is, is people like Ross getting behind the microphone. And there's one thing about North Melbourne supporters, you're passionate, whether it's passionate about your club winning, passionate about losing, passionate about being relocated to Gold Coast, uh, you're all heart and soul. So, there's one question, Ross, one yes. question and one question <laughs> only. Right. Ross, from the North Talk podcast, how do you want your footy? Lace out. Listeners, this is 2022 North Melbourne season preview. I'm actually tipping for you to be jumping a few spots up the ladder this year. You will definitely be not sitting down the bottom. Uh which is, like I said, down the bottom is not always a bad thing, but this year you're <laughs> going to be jumping up a couple of spots. Have a great well, night, everybody. Take care. Roscoe, you are a champ, and good luck for 2022. Thanks, Peps. Good on you, mate. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of Place Out. Head over to iTunes and Spotify to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. And remember, join us every single Tuesday night, 8 p.m., Australian Eastern Standard Time on our Facebook page with yours truly, Christopher Pepper, and the co-host with the most, Jamie Wallace, giving you your footy how you want it. Ace out.